Welcome to Shoot the Breeze, a series on a podcast that celebrates the messiness of life, relationships, and Christianity, featuring my wife Lacey and myself, Nathan. It's creatively titled because it will be just us shooting the breeze, uh, sometimes with guests, while occasionally saying something important. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to this episode of Shooting the Breeze with your hosts, Nathan and Lacey Steele. Lacey is uh, currently texting someone because <laughs> she finds not. this so interesting. I am not texting someone. What are you doing, Lacey? The more you know. What are you doing, Lacey? I'm looking something up. Okay. Well, Lacey, last episode, um, we discovered mm-hmm. Lacey thought the word spin a yarn. It's not a word. Or the phrase spin a yarn was a real thing. Yes. And um, we discovered after the episode, I gave her a hard time. Uh Uh-huh. And as someone who is incredibly humble and fully admits their faults, I want to say I was wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. He's wrong. (laughs) I discovered that roughly 30 seconds after we ended filming because I looked it up and found that indeed I am correct. Which usually is how most of did our you, arguments end. Yeah, but no, did you? I was getting to the point that you were right. Yeah, but you were being so long about it. I thought we'd just get to the point that you're wrong. Because I had to establish the fact that first, my character <laughs> of being incredibly humble, mm-hmm. and also a quality of my character of being willing so to. So, what admit, Nathan's doing right now is spinning a yarn. Oh, what are you doing there, sweetie? <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm, He's taking the phrase. Dipping, <laughs> dipping my microphone in my tea. <laughs> Oh, that's, Sorry. Hope you got a hearty one over there. <laughs> mm. So, could you tell us about spinning the yarn or spinning a yarn and what it means? Um, if you say that someone spins a yarn, you mean that they tell a story that is not true, often an interesting or imaginative one, just like Nathan was doing, but a mere few seconds ago. He was spinning a yarn. Okay. Thanks. I felt like we needed to do a little fact check uh, <laughs> from last week's uh-huh. or last episodes. Um, the other thing that we want to make you aware of in this episode is that we are we want to do a Q and R, which is different than a Q and A. Q and A is question and answer. What we want to do is Q and R, which is question and response, where we will respond to your questions by only using facial expressions. <laughs> So what will happen is Nathan will read a question and then I'll make a facial expression and vice versa. Which is going to be incredible for a podcast. (laughs) It's going to be hard for a podcast. I'm not going to lie. It's like (laughs) new. It's like inventive. It's like art, you know, like. It's up to anyone's um, interpretation. Yeah, yeah. It's kind (laughs) of like performance art for podcasting. (laughs) Okay, so what we're going to do is a (laughs) Q&R where if you could uh, write in your questions uh, your concerns, your thoughts, you, even your opinions on things of life, relationships, or theology, or Bible verses, or anything like that, that you want to hear us uh, really spout off a fantastic soliloquy about. Do you like that use of the word soliloquy? I do. You've been, you've been listening to me <laughs> talk, huh? <laughs> so, anyways. Please feel free. Relationships, life, if you have a question, thought, concern, Bible verse, theology, whatever it is, and uh, we would love to take your questions and uh, respond to them and hopefully answer them. But uh, at least what we'll do is respond. That's what we promise we will do, is respond to it on this podcast. Not every single question we get, though. Every no. <laughs> single <laughs> There is no such thing um, as a dumb shot. question. I'm just going to say you have a shot. There is such thing as a dumb question, and we will not embarrass you if your question is thus. So don't worry about that. So if wherever you you discover this podcast or video, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube comments, email, we do also accept Carrier Pigeon as well as Smoke Signal. Um and smoked salmon. I accept smoked salmon anytime. Ooh, we do accept smoked we salmon do. for our friends in Alaska. Yeah, hint. In case you're wondering. Hint. You know, I bought the family salmon last week for New Year's meal, or a few weeks ago for New Year's oh, meal. Oh, we killed it. We Just, killed it. 
It was a good. I found I actually so good. found good salmon down here. I was shocked. Okay, so two like I, there's two salmon is one of my favorite fish along with halibut. Halibut along with king crab can become very rich, very fast. Along with you eat them together. No, what no, a no. Rich no. man are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that uh, they can become very. They're very rich meats, king crab and and sam or um halibut. But I love king salmon specifically winter king yeah winter, is the i was best just thinking of winter king the other day oh guys. i was dreaming of winter king i mean it's it is it's, if best. you've not had winter king i'm sorry for you you've not enjoyed fish if you're not a fish eater if you're like you disgusting fish king winter it's not king, been made for you right Honestly, that's why I said, if you don't enjoy fish, fish, someone's not made it for you the right way. Exactly. I exactly. Think. And on it, this is coming from me who never grew up fishing, was not a huge fan of fish until we moved to Alaska where I had hell bit for, and that was the, the first fish I really enjoyed. Um, and then King crab. And then I had salmon, which again can taste a bit fishy, Unless someone makes it right, which Lacey makes it with either a, um, what is it, like a butter garlic, herb encrusted, or uh, um, like a soy sauce, uh, brown sugar glaze, which is, those two are phenomenal. But then we had Winter King, and Winter King, I don't care if you like fish or not, you you literally have to do nothing to the fish, Mm -hmm. and you can eat it. It's good. It's so good. It's good stuff. I was just, or you reminded me of that present we got when I, when you really got into fish is real is when we, when we were first married and we were given a deep fryer as a wedding gift. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, owning your own deep fryer, like, I'm not talking like a fry daddy, like something on the stove. I'm talking like, uh, it almost looks like a bread maker kind of deep fryer and it's fully encased, you know, safe to use. And we'd whip that baby out and we'd have like these parties where we just fry everything oh that is a slippery slope right there exactly one of my favorite (laughs) memories of the deep fryer is when we were watching um super size me yes which dealt with like fried food and stuff like that we all got hungry for fried food (laughs) we did and so me my friend and you even like we all yeah we all fried stuff up fried stuff up as we're watching yeah i tell you what we we lived it up with that fryer until it died few years down the road and i refused to buy another one because it just <laughs> it wasn't a good idea. it was so good you know i think about it sometimes like how much fun it would be to have another one but i'm not gonna do it now you're making me want no a deep fish. fryer well oh, no I fish oh i know i know okay let's move on because our stomachs are gonna start growing start yep um <clears throat> okay ready for the this is my favorite one of I think my new favorite your new favorite segment segment is called whistleblower, which last uh, two episodes ago we did whistleblower. Are you playing? She's playing footsie I'm not, with me. I just grabbed your foot with, with my your foot. foot, which is called <laughs> footsie. No, it's not. It's just a little tap, like hey, I see you. Because I'm sitting across <laughs> from. <laughs> okay, whistleblower because it's an episode where we get to kind of like tattle on the other person or okay. reveal. To you, the observer, the listener, secrets about the other person that they don't know about. So today's whistleblower... I'm so excited. ...moment. Ready? What is it? Do you know what it is? No. No, good. Okay. (laughs) Folks, I want you to know that Lacey is legally blind. Oh, that's not exciting. Most people no, no, are. no. Shh. Most people are. Yeah. <laughs> no, hold on. Here's here's why I say Lacey is legally blind. Um, because she can't drive without her glasses. Normative. Also, this takes a little personal um, endeavor into my own life. Her being legally blind when she comes. Like, forgive, let me give you an example. A less dangerous example, and then I'll give you more exa- dangerous examples. So, um, <clears throat> one time she came up to me, I was leaning on the counter. She comes up to me and rubs my back, which you know, that's, that's cute. That's nice. You know, it makes me feel loved and cared for. 
And she proceeds, as she's rubbing my back, to open the cupboard door, which slams me in the face. Okay, so that was not a blind issue. That was a perspective issue. That's called spatial awareness. Perception. And I honestly struggle with it. So, Which, yes. that. But that's not, like, that's not, like, my eyesight. And, on, okay, and two, I'm actually not legally blind. Legally blind is actually a term attributed to people that are legally blind. I just have a, a really strong need for corrective lenses. Let me, let me ask so. you this. Are you able to drive without your That is lenses? not the criteria to be legally blind. Are you able to drive? We're going to have to do another fact check next time. Yes. <laughs> yes or no. Are you able to drive? I am able to drive. Am I able to drive and see what's in front of me, me on the road? No. Let me rephrase that. Are you capable? So I am capable. <laughs> I just cannot see what is on the you road. You know when a, uh, a flight attendant asks you if you're sitting in the exit row, they say, are you ready, <laughs> willing, and able? <laughs> Lacey is both ready and willing to drive. The question is, is she able? Okay, so I don't feel like this whistleblower is very exciting. Do you have anything else to add to it? It, it, well, yes, you. Okay, go ahead. People not riding with you in a vehicle because you're legally blind and you have perception issues. Guys, I wear glasses or contacts. Everybody knows that. That is normative. Listen, like, okay, so is... about your your responses, respond to my husband and tell him that most of you guys wear glasses and need them glasses. to drive. Oh, you you have a little baby prescription. I have a prescription. It's a little teeny baby prescription. He is... Says the blind he woman. Is like, I think a negative 0.5 you know or what? something like that. No, and he The is only person <laughs> who's able to definitely call me little baby blind would be Helen Keller. And that's it. Hey, hey, we don't do that on the show. We don't make Helen Keller jokes. It's not a joke. It's a joke. And I it's don't not. appreciate it. She would say you have a baby she would. I and I. I do. That's not a I joke, do. folks. I'm not making or belittling, making fun of her or belittling her. I'm just saying, Helen Keller is the only one who would be able to say, "Hey, okay, that's moving a baby. on." Do you have any other stories or any other examples? Is that it? I was going to say you running into parked things, but we don't have to talk about. I that. feel like this is not a whistleblower. This is a Nathan jumping off point to air um, grievances of the past year. <laughs> No, okay, so something that, it, okay, so this is where, you know, you, you. I mean, that would be a true whistleblower is the last few accidents were yeah. me. That's a true whistleblower. Yes, and they were, they were, here's the, but I, I do want to come to your defense. Okay. First of all, they were completely all perception issues on your part. <laughs> But yes. the defense is okay. when Lacey, when things are stressful in our family and Lacey feels overwhelmed, she apparently takes it out on <laughs> driving. <laughs> no, I just run into things. <laughs> but it's not like, no, exactly. That's what I mean is like you, your attention to awareness, not like not, you're not flighty or ditzy or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. But your attention, like your awareness ability is so diminished when our life is completely stressful, right? You've actually asked me, you said, hey, <laughs> I'm really stressed out. Can you drive? Like, you've asked me to drive because you just know, like, your brain is going and thinking and processing so many other things. You do that. But the reason I brought up the I thing is because I feel like that is definitely a contributing factor. No, I think that you look at people that wear contacts or glasses that have actual legitimate need and think, wow... That's really rare, but it's not. No, but it, this is, I'm not talking, I'm not whistleblowing on them. I'm whistleblowing on you. Okay. All right. Anyways, folks, <clears throat> Lacey says I have this too many times on this script, but you know what? Feel free <laughs> it's to too send many times. in your questions and we would love to respond to them uh, here on an episode. Um, so please feel free to respond. Uh, feel free to comment uh, like, uh, rate this podcast wherever you find it, and uh, leave a message. Uh, Facebook, Instagram. Maybe rate a different one because I don't feel like this one's going well so far. YouTube. What? Write a what? Rate it. You said rate this podcast. Yeah, not like this episode. Oh, oh, okay. Like Wait. us. In, yeah, can like you don't guys, judge us by this. Yeah, no, no, no. Just rate us in general. Like me and Lacey, rate us. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. This is one of the many resources we make available for free. 
at our website, cultivaterelationships.com. Our resources have helped people grow in their relationship with God and others. Uh, We've seen people set free from uncontrollable anger and paralyzing fear. We've witnessed estranged family members be reunited after working through our freedom booklet. We've helped people build healthy relationship and coping habits through our coaching videos. And all of these resources are made available for free because of the generous support of people like you. If you would like to become a partner, please visit cultivaterelationships.com slash support. Now, I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. We're going to be, who we want to share is our worst and best, best and worst. And what we're going to focus on is trips, vacations, yes. times we've traveled together. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So um, I was. How many do we get? Like just one Best and worst. But what if I have equally... Okay, I'll start. Okay, go. Okay. So, um, my... Do you want me to start with best or worst? Mm. Tell you what, you do best and I will start with worst. I'm afraid you're going to steal my worst. That's not up to you. Okay, I'm going to go worse first. <laughs> what? Okay, go. No, I'm just kidding. I'll have it. Okay. Okay, so my very best was, um, it's actually two. <gasps> okay, see? <laughs> double standard, I, double standard, double standard. Remember last episode how we were talking about control? <laughs> this is Lacey apparently not exhibiting control issues. No control. Um, okay, so my best one I'm going to start with was when I was 18. It was okay. not with you. Um, you said this is the worst one? No, best. Oh. So I was 18 and I felt like I should go on this mission trip with my youth group. And I'd never done anything like this before. And I, this was, I guess, probably my first time really venturing, venturing out into faith um, and believing that the Lord would allow me to raise the money needed for this trip or get the money somehow. And I wasn't sure how this was going to happen by a certain date. And at the time, I was attending this um, Bible study, this girl's Bible study, and um, what I had been praying with them for a while about this trip and if I should do it. And um, they all got together and they all pitched in some money and wrote me a card and prayed over me and gave it to me. And it was, it, like I said, it was the first time I had a really experienced the Lord meeting my faith like that. Yeah. And not just meeting my faith, but through people I loved and cared about and seeing how much they believed in the, the, the Lord in me, like yeah. what he was doing in me and confirming that through giving. And I was really humble because, I mean, these are a bunch of like 15, 16, 17 year old That's awesome. girls, you know. And so that was a that was a really incredible um, time. It also is the first time I was ever exposed to um, parts of the third world and what that meant. And that deeply impacted me and changed the trajectory of my life and my value system. So. Yeah, I that was an amazing trip. Um, that's one of the reasons I am a believer in short-term mission trips mm-hmm. because I think that it can take somebody and <clears throat> change them enough to cause them to give into things they believe in and give into um, ministries <coughs> that are, you know, all over the world. It can yeah. change their attitude yeah. and perspective. So that was the first one, and the second. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, you had two. I have two, yeah. And the second one was when we um, we moved over to Ireland for about six months right after we adopted the girls. And during that time, I just had the thought, like, wouldn't it be fun to hop over to, to France and see Paris? Because I'd never um, been to, to France or Paris and just had this this idea that I wanted to go there. I would love to go there my whole life. I'd wanted to be go there. And... Um, but when we were, you know, I had two little kids. I mean, Ari, when we moved over there, was two months old, and Lydia was three. And we were doing everything we could just to make it with what we had raised then. And it just, it seemed like it was not going to be possible, even though it, it wouldn't have been super expensive. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I just knew it was something I had to give up. So I just said, okay, Lord, I release this to you. It's not going to happen. I, I know that you care about me and that you care about things, things I care about. And if you want to bring this back, if this is something to value that you'll bring it back to me in my life. So I had made a really good friend over there in Ireland and I was telling her about this, about how the Lord had told, you know, just worked this in my heart. And she goes, well, Lacey, I want to talk to you about that. I feel like I'm supposed to pay for you to go there. And I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. It's fine. I knew I have to like give it up and release it. And if the Lord wants me to go later, he'll provide. And she's like, no, you're not listening. (laughs) The Lord is providing. And so it was really cool. So Nathan and I were able to, um, actually some of the friends we had made over there took the girls for a few days. Um, Ari was a little bit older at this time. Not crazy old. Like, I know you're three months. Some moms are there out there judging me. But um, she was at that time uh, went in months. August. Six months. No, she was eight months. Yes. Just, yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was right yeah. before. So, yeah. uh, or maybe a little, maybe seven or eight months. Anyway, <laughs> Ari was a very hard baby. So those months were very, very long. And so having just that two day, I think it was three days solid. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> time away and to be able to Nathan and I didn't even sleep we just ran around Paris yeah we night. made what well, we literally like, maybe had four hours of sleep per night maybe like three days two nights yeah yeah um, but that I mean that was just a super special yeah. trip because I felt like the Lord gave it to me yeah Ari was a hard baby for, well she would cry a lot and then vomit a lot mm-hmm. and we re- we f- later realized she was allergic to dairy which is well, at that time, it wasn't just dairy. It was she had to have this protein that was reworked. Anyway, it's really boring. Yeah. It got all worked out, but not right. until we returned home to right. the U.S. I'm just saying it wasn't, like, behavioral. I don't want to dog on Ari. What? It wasn't. No, <laughs> she was too little to have behavioral stuff Yeah, then. right, right, right. Um, so, but it was just, yeah, she it was, was just, just, yeah. So, colicky, scre- right, constant right. screaming. Um, yeah. Constant, literally 24 hours. Guys, I never want to go back there. I'm going to be straight with you. <laughs> To the baby? <laughs> Not just... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That really... Is, I Ari We're, was the only baby we ever had, and right. she was so hard, it kind of... We're good on babies, guys. I feel like that, yeah. yeah. Okay, so my favorite trip... I have two as well. Um, because the first one, kind of going along with your first story, um, was our Ireland trip. We had to raise $30,000 within... It's like within a month or two, I think it was. No, it was that. I'm sorry. I'm going to fact check you right now. Okay, go. Fact check. So we had been fundraising for a year to go to was Ireland. Was it really? Yeah, we had been fundraising for a year. That's why we went with the girls when they were so little is because we had already had it on the books and we weren't sure if the adoptions were going to go through. Oh, that's right. That's so right. So we went yeah. through it. So we well, fundraised. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. Let me tell you what happened. I feel like fact checkers are this is dumb. It is. I am Zuckerberg right now. You, <laughs> except for I'm accurate. We had a whole year. The problem was the last six weeks we had to raise an additional 10 grand because our housing situation changed. Oh, that's right. That's right. So that's why, that's why you're remembering it being crazy at the end. Right. Thank you. That's what it was. So here's the, the whole point though, is that it, again, kind of what you're saying with the, your trip, um, showed us how many people love us, how many people support us. And even, you know, many of you who are listening to this were, our first supporters. And, and so it's just, you know, those trips that you realize, wow. Um, you just re- recognize how much God cares for you and how much he speaks to people on your behalf and, and support you. So that was my favorite ministry slash kind of, if you will, spiritual trip, you know, that all of that, my favorite peer fun trip was our first trip to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. With no kids. We went for a media conference, which was a blast. And then we met some people at the church we were at the conference with, and they took us surfing. Mm -hmm. And it was just Lacey and I. It was fantastic. That was an amazing one. That was really great. Every, honestly, every trip. You compare it to? uh Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I know. So (laughs) that was a really good one. All right. Worst trip. Okay. Worst trip was. A very long trip. It oh, ended yeah. up being like six weeks long, but it all started out. I know it's a bad one. Are you ready? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. It all started out with Ari getting bit by a dog. Oh, yeah. 
And then it went downhill from there. No, it was a total of 12 weeks. 12 weeks. But six weeks stateside and six weeks over. Overseas. It was was one of those trips that if it could go wrong, it did. So we start off with Ari getting bit by a dog before we were going to fly to... I guess this is a bright moment. Before we were going to fly overseas... Um, my machine broke. It wouldn't Which, work. Which, talk about your machine for us. My okay. machine is the, a respiratory therapy machine. Um, I have cystic fibrosis, and so basically this machine keeps me alive because it helps me get the mucus out of my lungs. And when it breaks, uh, Lacey has to do hand therapies, which is just miserable for her. But here's the crux of the therapy machine, is that without doing a therapy... Uh, My lungs fill up with mucus, and death is quickly upon me. Um, And so it's not like, oh, at least you could just do therapies. It's just one of those moments you recognize immediately the... the, Dependency. Yeah, the dependency, but then also how frail life can be. Right, and, you know, I laugh because this machine is broken several (laughs) times as we were traveling or as we got someplace, or this time it was right before, and it... um, so he has to do his treatments two to three times a day, depending on what you're fighting, battling. And he has two machines. One is a nebulizer, which gives him aerosol meds. Yeah. Those of you familiar with, uh, like, um, asthma, same, same, actually a lot of the same medication. And the other is this, uh, it's called the vest, which is like a chest compression Mm -hmm. one. So he wears a vest and it fills up with air and then it, it gives different percussions um, to his chest to loosen right. up the mucus. So he does these treatments on average. It's about an hour, hour 15 yeah. in the morning and in the evening and possibly a midday one, depending on how he's feeling. And so when his machine breaks, I am the one doing these percussive treatments. Right. And, you know, I do them. And I'm, I, we've had several trips where I've had to do them. But um, they're like two hours long it takes longer when you're doing the treatments just uh, manually and also it is exhausting if you're not like used to going like this for and it's it's, it's, so what she's doing is like cupping her hands and you basically pat on the person's back um and And it's like or chest or yeah you you have to do that for about eight different spots on the torso for a half hour each and it just is or five, sorry, five minutes each, five minutes each. Right. Spot. So, yeah. It, yeah. So looking at that, when we were about ready to leave, it was like, oh, yeah, for the next six weeks. Right. I'm going to have to do this. And so I resign myself to it. I always resign myself to it a little bit when we travel anyway that that might yeah. happen. Like one time we were traveling overseas and Nathan just <laughs> accidentally left his vest on our bed. And oh, thankfully it wasn't too long of a trip, but it was... <laughs> It was so horrible because I remember very specifically where I left it. And basically I'm lugging around the airports, which it's another international trip. A 30 pound paperweight yeah, that, that we every security no guard has to look at and, and do the bomb check. Text. Oh my word. Yeah. So we, so we're about ready to fly out and he calls the company and there's nothing they can do. So we get there and we have this paperweight with us and he's just like, I'm just going to try it. And it worked. Yeah. And it worked the rest of the six weeks there. Yeah, it's crazy. So it was one of those, like, again, kind of with the stress of everything and then that. And so that, that I would say, bar none, is the worst trip I feel like we've had. Simply because the dog bite was one. It was very long. It was a long trip. It was a a great ministry trip in that we met with a lot of people. There was a lot of other things that happened, too, I want to say. There's so many other things. want to hear my worst one yeah what's your worst okay so um it's had to have been about what is it are you 38 now 37 38 did i turn 38 or 37 you turned 37 i turned 37 okay so about seven years ago nathan was going to turn 30 and no <laughs> no hold on no i get to tell the story no I no, no 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 hold on hold on hold i on. picked it no i feel like this is a whistleblower no i, I get to pick it no hold on 
I feel like this is a whistleblower. Okay, fine. It's uh, fine. Whatever it is, it's my story. Hold on. You need to stop. It's my story. I need to say one thing. You can't what? because you can't tell the story before I tell it. You can. I was sick. Stop. I can't. That's you, I was that's sick. Part of, okay. I was sick, guys. <laughs> okay. So, so Vomiting. Nathan, stop. Stop. I'm sorry. Stop. <laughs> okay. So Nathan. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> he was turning thirty, and he. I, I don't know, his whole life he had thought he was going to die young, he wasn't going to have a family, you know, his whole life, meaning, you know, as he was a kid, they kind of sat him down and told him, look, we want you to prepare that you probably won't live very long, and so he had just in his mind that he wasn't going to live very 30, long. 30, yeah, 30 was the last benchmark I had put on my life. So it's actually right. a really big birthday for me in that, I, I had not planned beyond this. So this is new territory for me. Right. And y he was just, I don't know. Like he, he the, it was a big release too. Yeah. I think spiritually for you to be like, yeah, I, I trust you Lord to move me beyond this right. milestone I've set for myself. So what I did is I, uh, I've all, I always thought it'd be really cool to be surprised with a trip. And so for eight months, I planned this trip for him to celebrate his 30th birthday. And um, one of the, at the time, Nathan was, he has this weird quirk about him. And this is a whistleblower. He has a weird quirk about him where he gets obsessed. Okay, get this. Okay, my husband gets obsessed with different pastors. <laughs> And all throughout our marriage, he'll go through different seasons of like not just listening to them or trying to read everything they have, but also trying almost like you don't do this anymore. Yeah. But when you were in your 20s, you would kind of start to model your clothing no, and no, your no. accessories. The, and like you remember your Rob Bell face. Oh, my word. The, OK, so I, the, OK, that's like my profession is teaching and I know, preaching. But most people I'm. I mimic very well. Okay, That's the so, thing. And then his preaching kind of takes some qualities of that person until eventually, I think you were early 30s. You got that. You I got did. Because I, I think a lot of it dealt with, right, like identity and stuff. Oh, of course. So yeah. you, yeah, you kind of, okay, they have a successful ministry. I'm going to mimic what they do. Or because I like the successful. way they do this. Right. Right. And so at the time he was obsessed with Mark Driscoll. Okay, like, you make you, me feel like, you make me sound like a stalker, okay? Yes. Not stalker. <laughs> like, I didn't knock on his window or, like, anything like that. No, he was just all about Mark, and it was the heights of... Mark, um, if you ever, ever, <laughs> he's not in the listening. slim chance, listen to this... He's not listening. <laughs> I guarantee you remember me, because... I, he does not remember you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry to break your heart. No, 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 no. When you, once <laughs> Lacey finishes the story, you'll. <laughs> okay. So uh, in the heights of Mars Hell, all of that, he just was just really digging the ministry Mark had. And it was actually, it was really cool because Mars Hill was doing a lot with podcasting and kind of free, freely giving right. all of their stuff. Well, and a, and lot so, of, a lot of the focus of Mars Hill was becoming applicable to young men, right? People right. who were very small and continue to be one of the least reach demographics in the church. And it's I really men. appreciated the influence right. that that had on you. It was very yeah. positive for our family. It was very positive for your growth right. as my husband and taking ownership right. of things. It was excellent. Um, and so I decided as part of this birthday oh, gift yes. that I would contact the, the church, Mars Hill in Seattle, and see if there'd be a way if I could arrange like a little meet and greet between Nathan and uh, you need to find some way to attach like... Oh, goodness. The, the, the supporting document here. <laughs> but um, so find a way for Nathan to meet Mark. And so we kind of exchanged some emails back and forth, me and some people at the church there. And they were just so great. And they said, you know, we really can't plan that. But this is the church he's going to be preaching at. And I'm sure you can go up and say hi and all that. And so I was like, great. We will plan on being in that church on, you know, that day. And it was, so it was, uh, Friday night of his birthday and, um, I had booked the tickets. I had booked a nice, uh, place for us to stay right on the, um, it was a beautiful ho like Fisherman's hotel? Wharf right? there. Yeah. yeah. It was a hotel. And, um, cause we both, Seattle. we'd the, both really never been to yeah. Seattle. We were living in, let me give some background. We were living in Alaska at the time, Homer, Alaska, and we we're going to Seattle, which is where the church right. was at. Yep. Right. So <clears throat> that Friday night, 
I had planned a surprise birthday party for Nathan as a cover. Like, so right. he thought that's what I was doing for, for his birthday. And I called, ordered a cake, and it was pretty great. I told the person to put on the cake. Something like, uh, we're so glad you're still alive. Yeah. Was that what it was? Yeah, it was, it was congratulations, she, you're still alive. Yeah, and we, she had to repeat it back to me like three times. It was so <laughs> funny. So um, we planned the party, and <clears throat> I'm just running around trying to get everything done. And um, so Nathan, meanwhile... I'm realizing he's just not acting like himself in mid afternoon, <laughs> like later afternoon. He just starts like vomiting. <laughs> Come to find out he has a stomach bug. Oh guys, it was and... more than just vomiting. Like <laughs> it was horrible. It was hours in the bathroom, <laughs> like where you're sitting on the toilet with the, like a, okay. We don't need a lot. Of a, well, I was going to say like a trash bag in front of me. I know it was it bad. Was and so uh, he doesn't know I was everything planned. He's just thinking I'm going to chill at home. I'm oh, yeah. terrible. And so She's I like, get home. No, she gets home and I'm laying on the sleeping on the couch with in a bathrobe and that's it. Right. And she goes shaking. Yeah. And she goes, Hey, you have to come with me. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm just wearing my bathrobe. Like I, at this yeah, point could care less. Cause he wouldn't come at first. I'm like, well, just for a minute. And you're like, I don't want to come. And I'm yeah. like, you have to come. So I make him come. And so we step out into um, Guys, I'm wearing sweats, party. a t-shirt, and a bathrobe. <laughs> because and that's, that's how amazing how I feel. How many people were there? Like, oh, there's 30, like 30 people. people. It was like people from like my past. Like so yeah. many people who didn't live in Homer. They traveled to Homer. So many people, guys, and I'm wearing this bathrobe. My hair's not so been washed in, I, like, three days. I make him go through this entire party, and he's trying to rally, man. Oh like, he's word. trying, but he feels so miserable. Well, then we go Here's, home, wait, wait, and wait, he goes wait. to go to bed. Not just physical, like, not just physical miserable. Like, again, it's 30th birthday. There's emotions behind yeah, it. Yeah. Like, Guys. And people are telling you. I had people like arrange to tell you things. You oh, know, my and, word. Yeah. So we get home and he's just like, oh, I'm so exhausted. I'm going to go to bed. And I'm like, wait, it's actually not over. Our flight leaves in an hour. Because yeah. <laughs> we had to take this little <laughs> puddle, puddle jumper, jumper plane yeah. to Anchorage and fly out. And we were leaving within an hour of getting out of the party. And so I'm like, hurry, we need to pack. And he's just looking at No, me. you're like, no, I packed for you. Let's go. Except for your therapy stuff. I right. I had to pack therapy my therapy. Stuff. Yeah. yeah your treatment stuff. Oh. So he's just, so I remember being on the plane and I'm so excited. I'm so pumped that I'm surprising him. And I remember being on the plane going, dear Jesus, wherever we go, <laughs> may there be a large bed that I could just, and a functioning bathroom. Like those I were think, my two things. Well, I told you on the plane, I said, we're going to go to Seattle. Right. And to this church, that's it. She goes, Oh, yeah, we're gonna go to this church. And I was like, Okay, fine, at least I can run to the bathroom if right. I have to. So, so you know, he has the flu, he's went through all this. We fly all night to get to Seattle, and the next morning, right away, run a car and head out to the church. Mm -hmm. So, we haven't really slept. And there, <clears throat> after the service, is I remember this vividly. I had a quarter of a bagel just to like give me some energy because I'm already exhausted from jet lag dehydrated and dehydrated. I had a Gatorade and a quarter of a bagel. Yeah. So we get to the church. There's Mark. We go up, introduce. No, 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 no. Hold on. You're remembering this wrong. I, cause I remember this vividly. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. So we sit down and Lacey, you know, goes over to this one lady. They do their little chitter chatter, whatever. Because they, obviously the lady that she'd been talking to. So I'm sitting there literally staring down at the, the, the seat in front of me, just kind of staring, going, oh, dear Jesus, help me not, like, basically poo my pants. <laughs> like, that's kind of what I'm, you know, <laughs> hoping, thinking. So Lacey comes back, sits down next to me, and, like, it felt like 30 seconds later, Mark Driscoll comes on stage, and he's like, all right! Where's the band? Where's the birthday boy? And I'm like, oh, good. There must be another birthday here. That's awesome. He comes up to us and I'm like, oh. So I don't get starstruck that like I really <laughs> that don't. often, like all the time that you often. run into stars. <laughs> right. So I don't I don't get nervous that way. But 
again, there's so many things going on in my brain that can I tell the conversation in, from your perspective, from my perspective. Yeah, go ahead. So Mark comes, he's like, Hey, you know, it's your birthday. I'm like, yeah. He goes, is this, you know, your first time in Seattle? And I'm like, I think so. I think I was here when I was a baby. And he's like, man, what do you like to do when I, when you travel? And I'm like, Oh, I like, you know, we just play it fast and loose. And he's like, okay, well, what do you, you know, like, what's your favorite meal? What do you like to eat? You know, he's really engaging, really trying to start up a conversation with this guy who you really wanted to meet him. just him down. And he's like, so what's your favorite restaurant? What do you like to eat? And I'm like, oh, man, we just, you know, traveling and we just play it fast and loose. Okay. And like, what's your favorite activity when you travel? Oh, man, seriously, we that, like we just play it fast and loose when we're when we travel. And in my mind, I'm like, I, I understand who I'm talking to. I understand that this was a big deal. But in my brain, I'm going, wow. Like, there's like nothing in my brain. You know, if you've seen the Lego movie, <laughs> this like prediction, <laughs> what is it? Preditiously vast space of nothingness that was my brain at that moment literally zero conversational I, I just like from my perspective i'm sitting there or i'm standing there thinking oh my gosh this poor man is trying to engage my husband and be so kind and so <coughs> you know just generous with time offering suggestions of fun things to go do and all nathan is just mumbling the same things over and over not even like all for all the man talks that Mark's been giving to, he's not even tr- trying to be like a bit like, I don't know, like approachable. And so um, I say, I just step in <laughs> and I'm like, hey, thank you so much. Where would you recommend? We just wanted to let you know we so appreciate your ministry and all that you've done, blah, blah, blah. It's really impacted my heart. <laughs> so I start speaking for Nathan. <laughs> And then I'm like, we go to walk away, and then we're like, oh, wait, wait, can I get a picture? And so I made Nathan go back up to him to get a picture. And it's, I for years, Nathan couldn't talk about this without, so, like, turning <clears throat> bright red. So this is the first time I've done this. <laughs> but Pastor Mark, if you're listening, <laughs> He's not first listening. of all, I want to apologize. That's not who I am. <laughs> uh, number two, well, I mean... I am a horrible conversationalist. That's that's a given. But I want to apologize because usually I could do function slightly better uh, than that. D- seriously, just slightly. Um, so <laughs> you're not missing much. But also, Mark, I'm not a psycho, and I had a stomach flu, and I feel like you had a horrible first. He's impression. probably thinking, "Why did you come talk to me when you had the right. stomach flu?" Right. And so if I gave you the stomach flu. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I've read a few of your books, and I know in one of your books you talk about a time that you had the stomach flu and you had to preach. And if that was from me, I'm... No, it was after service. Yeah, but I mean, like, maybe the next no, week or something. No, but don't take that. Mm-mm. You know what? I'm not sorry, flu. Mark. I guess. My wife hey, told listen, me... listen, you're not going to be on the right here, no matter how you shake <laughs> this down. <laughs> you... Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to move on. That no, was a great story. I, it was, <laughs> And then the rest of it was, we like fought the entire last two Literally days. Literally the entire last, yeah, it was horrible. The last two, you know what was and funny? And I was like, is don't Seattle, you realize I've been planning this for You know what's so funny though, months? is I do remember that trip. That trip ended up being fun, <laughs> but like <laughs> there was so many things wrong with that trip. <clears throat> it, was an, it was enjoyable. We did fight because I was hungry and you wanted to go thrifting. There was that. I'm in the right on that one. I but, always want to go thrifting. Yeah. <laughs> and Nathan so the, always wants to eat, so. But after coming off of a stomach flu, yeah, the only thing you could think about is food. Like, getting energy, sustenance into your, like, for me, diseased little body. Aww. Fragile. What's that? What's that sound? What, what am I hearing? It's a tiny violin. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> it is. You're um, right. Okay. Remember, folks, you're especially after my, this. As one, as our, one of our favorite comedians always says, I you're you, on my side. I want you to remember, you're on my <laughs> side on this story, okay? Ooh, I should have started out with that. Right. Okay, remember, folks, please 
uh, feel free to write in questions, comments, and concerns. I'm confident after not that concerns. Last story, you keep saying concerns. Uh, I don't want they know might concerns. be concerned for me in in how you take care of me. Maybe. Um, write them in. We'll respond. Pencil them. Last thing we want to discuss is a little icebreaker game called Desert Island or Deserted Island. I would say Desert, Desert Island. You do say Desert Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's Deserted Island. <clears throat> and uh, today, the topic today is top three movies that you'd bring on a deserted desert island. Oh, okay, so you have it written in our notes yeah. as favorite movies, not ones you'd bring on a desert no, island. A desert, desert island. A, a desert island. Desert island. <laughs> right there. On oh, a desert island. I'm not going to need any movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't you want to watch something while you eat dessert? Okay, so desert island top movies you'd bring and why? Okay, so I'm going to answer a little bit differently, so you go first. What? Number one, Gladiator. I, I know, could watch. That is your favorite. One. I could watch that movie. It has. Here's. I could watch that movie. I could watch that movie. <laughs> at least no once. context. Just I could. I could watch that movie. Like right now. At least once. You maybe. Leave? Yeah. Right now. I'm gonna go watch that movie. It has identity in it. It has a dad in it. It has battles in it. It has you know fighting for what is right in it. It has not not revenge but justice. Like it has mm, all those things that a good movie has gladiator is my number one what yes that one mm -hmm. okay what's your what's yours you have I, to say one i know but i wrote this as not as like top movies you like in your life and why not bring on the deserted island. that's not my fault because it's deserted island <laughs> okay well i will say that one of my all-time favorite movies is actually baby mama Ooh. Are we on the island together? <laughs> Not if you're bringing Gladiator. Maybe we got our, our plane crashed on the way to see Mark Driscoll, and we have those movies. Okay, so Baby Mama is so funny to me because I we actually adopted um, <coughs> from uh, my sister. my And so when my sister was pregnant, it, was, <laughs> it like parallels almost... That movie, the sis, the the two ladies in that movie yes. are so lacy and her sister. It's, yeah, in, oh. in just a lot of ways. Not I even mean, not identical, would, but very similar. Down majority. to the Dr. Pepper yeah. addiction and yeah. the dying of the hair and the me trying to get her to drink water and us fighting yep. about having vitamins and everything, the way she talked. They talk to each other. And I mean, I love that movie f because it's funny mm -hmm. and then also just the interaction between the two women is so i don't know it just is very it's, special to me yeah it's <laughs> perfect it's perfect okay so great second movie <clears throat> man i didn't think this far ahead i just had gladiator you just <laughs> <I know. laughs> gladiator, gladiator. but it's it's glad <laughs> hold on it's gladiator the extended version with behind the scenes in it so it's more like a blu-ray i guess so gladiator blu-ray Second. You can't have Gladiator Blu-ray as your second one movie. No, 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 that's the first. <laughs> so, um, okay, so second movie would have to be. Could it be a series? And you're gonna choose Left Behind. It can't have Kirk Cameron in it. Whatever movie you choose, just out of no, sense no, could of it be a series though, pride. or just one. Like an entire. You want to group an entire series? Together. Yeah, like right, for example, like fine. Lord Go of the Rings. It. Yeah, do it. Lord of the Rings. The series, okay. all three, because Lacey bought me the extended set, so I may or may not have watched all of them in succession over the course of a week, spending about eight to ten hours a day watching. That was when you were healing from your surgery, though, so. Worth it. I feel like it was like a little babysitter I bought for you, actually. It really was. Yeah. I did nothing except begin my quest to make... <laughs> Costumes. Ooh, we got to talk about that sometime. No, it is not a costume. <laughs> And we will talk about that later, not on this podcast. That's like a, hey, can we do whistleblower again? <laughs> no, no. Save that. We're already... No, save that one. Okay. Okay. Um, my, it's, it's intri it'll be intriguing to them. Oh, yeah. So Lord of the Rings. That's my second one. My second one would be um, 
Gosh, I love when I was younger, my dad and I, we'd always go out and get action movies, but like get a kid movie for my siblings to watch. And then later I'd have time with dad to watch an action movie with him. And so like any of those 90s action movie guys like Bruce Willis or, you know. Um, you got to pick one. Okay, Die Hards. All three or all seven? You chose seven? a series. Yeah, they're actually a series. Those were just like, uh, let's do another Die okay. Hard. Die Hard is just as much a legitimate series as Lord of the Rings. Okay, folks, if you want to go ahead and comment on that one, <laughs> it is. They're all the. They're all the. I mean, Bruce Willis you are is in putting, all of them. <clears throat> you are putting Die Hard, a '90s action flick, flick with flick. Lord of the Rings. How dare you? Literally over what now? Fifty six. Almost a hundred years old series from one of the old. best authors, Token. No. Token was a friend of C.S. Lewis. It was in that era that right. Lord of the Rings was released. So. What does that have to... your timeline straight. Right. 40s, 50s? Yes. 19. Is that 100 years 40s, to you? That's why I said 75. <laughs> <laughs> Math is not my forte. <laughs> my own whistleblower. Okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Point is, you can't... You're fine. You can watch the series... We're not on the island together, though, by the way. Oh, um, you kicked me off now? <coughs> yeah. Fine. Please. You take your gladiator and your gladiator Blu-ray and head on over <laughs> to your side. <laughs> and my Lord of the Rings <laughs> extended set, 16 DVDs, pure Lord of the Rings behind the scenes action. <laughs> okay. Last one. Oh, my last one. I should probably pick a comedy just to as a pick me up. So is the nine seasons of The Office... Does that count? No, it does not count. It's a series. Okay. Moving on from you. You're cheating. You're being <laughs> a cheater on the island with your dessert. And <laughs> my dessert. Okay. Uh, because I, I picked these without realizing we were on the island, I picked my last one is my childhood favorite that I have loved for 30 years. <sighs> Cutting Edge. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> I love she, that movie so much. <clears throat> she. <sighs> what? Nope. My. Th- Third one, I think, is Princess Bride. It's an actual single movie. You can't... Princess you, Bride. Okay, fine. <clears throat> but mine is The Cutting Edge, and I have always loved that movie, and I always will, and Nathan may make fun of me as much as he wants, but it is a classic, and I love it. It's a horrible movie. It's <laughs> a horrible movie. <laughs> For the record, real quick. Uh, well, I was going to make fun of Lacey's other favorite movie, but... What's my other favorite movie? Um... Never been kissed. Oh, I almost had that one. I, I had that one down and I erased it. I so, do love that movie. Lacey, uh, watched Never Been Kissed with some of the college. students. I invited students. some college students up yeah. just a few years ago, and if they if got done watching that movie yeah. and they looked at me and they were like, "This movie is terrible. This movie is advocating for terrible things." Like a and like I'm a. Like, no, it's like a classic. It's like, isn't the teacher so hot? Like, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, she's also supposed to be in high school, and okay. the teacher is falling in love with it with Granite. a high school student. Granted, I never put that into perspective till I was older. When I was in high school, I thought the movie was great and it's hilarious and it has some great classic scenes. Also, and I will always like it. Lacey was homeschooled. Hey, that has nothing so, to do with nothing. I mean. Except everything. Okay. Um, what else? That's it. That's all <laughs> we have. Else? That's it. Let's end there. Hey, remember, send in your questions. Send in your gonna comments. You're going to Bob Barker there. Whenever you send say in. remember, I always like, immediately remember, go to Bob Barker. Have your pet spayed or neutered <laughs> also. Also. Thank you for joining us on this episode. I hope you learned a little bit about us. I didn't think this podcast was about learning anything. It's not. Okay. But they definitely learned a lot about us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe too much. Maybe a little bit. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>